Welcome to my lecture online. This problem is somewhat similar to the previous video. We're still trying to find the output voltage as a function of time. When we have a time varying voltage input at the source, 50 volt max, the frequency, the angle of frequency is 10, and we have a phase angle of 30 on the input. Now notice we have an inductor in parallel with a resistor, and then we have a capacitor right here. We want to know the voltage across the capacitor as the function of time. So again, the idea would be to convert everything into the frequency domain, work out the problem for the voltage output, and then convert back into the time domain. So first for the voltage of the source, we take the maximum voltage and the phase angle. So this becomes 50 with a phase angle of positive 30 degrees. That's an easy conversion. Now for the inductive reactance here, we know that that's equal to J times omega L. And so omega in this case, let's just write it down. Omega here is equal to 10 hertz. So that gives us 10. And L was given to us as, uh, let's see here, L, oh, there we go, 0.5 henrys. So 0 0.5, which together gives us J5. So that would be right here. That gives us a J5 for the inductor. On the input voltage, we have 50 with a phase angle of 30 degrees. And then for the capacitor, that is minus J over omega C, which is minus J divided by 10. And in this case, the capacitance was 0 0.05, 0 0.05, that would be 0 0.5. And take the inverse of that would be equal to minus J2. So that gives us the value for the capacitor. And finally, we're ready now to find the impedance of our parallel branch because we're going to have to add this impedance to the impedance over here. So the impedance of the parallel, parallel branch, the resistor here is 10. So let's go ahead and plug in 10. So we multiply those together. So we have a 10 with a phase angle of 0 for the resistor. And we're going to multiply that times 5 with a phase angle of plus 90 degrees since it's an inductor and divide that by the sum of the two. Now we get that as 10 plus J5 because when we add, we want to go ahead and put it in that form. When we multiply, we like to put it in that form. So this is equal to 50, add the phase angles of 90 degrees, divided by in the denominator, we get 10 plus J5. Now we can go ahead and convert that actually to the other form magnitude and phase angle form. So it gives us 100 plus 25, take the square root of that, that's 11.18, basically 11.2, 11.2, and phase angle wise that would be 0.5, take the inverse tangent, that's 26.6 degrees, 26.6 degrees, and if we divide that, 50 divided by 11.18, I'll just put 1.8 there because that's what I had on my calculator. Okay, is equal to 4.47. And the phase angle with 90 minus 26.6. Uh, let's see, 90 minus 26.6 is 63.4 degrees. Okay, so if I then want to convert that back into the uh, real and imaginary part, we can do that. So we take the cosine of that, cosine, multiply that times 4.47, we get 2, exactly, wow. So that gives us a, this is equal to 2, and 63.4, take the sine of that and multiply that times 4.47, it gives us a, hmm, a 4. That would be a plus J4. So we can have the parallel impedance of the parallel branch in this format or in this format, so that way we can have it handy to us. Now I need to find the total impedance when we're going to add these two together. So when we add them together, well, I'm going to need a little bit more room, so let me move up here. Z total is equal to Z of the parallel branch plus Z of the capacitor. So the parallel branch, Right here, let's go ahead and 
use that format since we're adding. So 2 plus J4. And we're going to add that to the impedance of the capacitor. That's going to be equal to 0 minus J2. And so when we add that together, we get 2 plus J2. So this is the total impedance of all three components combined. Now to find the output voltage, V out, which is equal to the voltage across the capacitor, we can now say that the output voltage V out is equal to V of the source, whoop, that should be an S, V of the source, times the ratio of the impedance of the capacitor divided by the total impedance, Z total. So now we want to go ahead and put into the magnitude and phase angle format. So this is going to be equal to V source times Z on the capacitor, well, Z on the capacitor, uh, uh, where are we here? Right here, Z on the capacitor <laughs> is going to be equal to um, magnitude of 2 and a phase angle of minus 90 degrees, divided by Z total, and Z total, well, let's see here, we're going to have to convert that into, this is equal to, uh, let's see here, that's 4, that's the square root of 8, that would be 2.83, 2.83, with a phase angle of 45 degrees, like that. So that goes in the denominator, 2.83 times a phase angle of 45 degrees, like this. And now we're ready to find the source voltage, uh, the output voltage. V output is equal to via the source, that would be 50 times a phase angle of 30 degrees, multiplied times 2 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees and divide by 2.83 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. So let's see what we get here. So 50, that's 100, divided by 2.83 equals 35.3 with a phase angle of, we have minus 90, that's minus 135, plus 30, that would be minus 105. Okay, and when we then reconvert that back into the time domain, we can now say that the voltage of the output as a function of time is equal to, we got the maximum voltage, 35.3, times the cosine of omega t, which is 10t, plus the phase angle, which in this case is minus 105 degrees, and of course that would be in volts. And so there's our output voltage, that's the voltage across capacitor with that input voltage given by the source voltage here. And that's how it's done.